whatever looks like a case that the enemy has been using against you that case is sorted now before this day is over it is evident that your captivity is torn God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedepo to preach the word of faith, liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil. Get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. Now, Bishop David Oyedepo. What do you look forward to? this morning. Reach out to heaven in faith. I desire an encounter with you today, a landmark encounter, a turnaround encounter. I desire an historical encounter. In this prophetic service, give me my own turnaround encounter today. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Yeah. Distraction is one of the greatest enemies of destiny. A broken focus is behind the frustration of man. Elijah said to Elisha, you have asked for a hard thing, but if you see me when I'm caught up, he said, it shall be yours. Many times Jesus passes by, but we are often distracted. We just miss that moment. But everyone here today, under the sound of my voice, and wherever anybody may be watching, I cause all the forces of distraction that is designed to make you miss your own portion today. Yeah. I decree that this shall be a day in your life to be much remembered. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. And you may please be seated. We had a lot of um, testimonies this year of dramatic turnarounds in the lives of people. Somebody has been smoking 34 years. Jesus cleaned it out, destroyed that taste board for cigarette. Somebody has been into hard drugs for 17 years. Jesus took that off. Uh, why? Because God has ordained to rewrite the story of his people by clearing the barriers on their path so they can assess their own inheritance. Whatever may remain in anybody's life that is standing between him and his inheritance between her and her inheritance. I pray that this month will clear such barriers off our path forever. Yeah. Whatever puts God off the life and the affairs of any individual here, In this month of sanctification, this month of cleansing, this month of spiritual enhancement, whatever is not allowing God to intervene in anyone's affair by the power of the blood, I decree they be cleared of the way. In the name of Jesus Christ. The righteous shall flourish. Ushers, you will make this available when we make the altar call. Everybody will get a copy of this Bible divider. And we'd like you to read what you have heard. It's put here for everybody to be able to read. And I believe that 
by reading that and putting yourself on the line, you are going to experience a spiritual boosting of your life as you line up with the ongoings this month. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Every encounter with the power of God demands a desperation. No desperation, you cannot assess the power of God. Oh, every man that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. So when you come, they check whether there is a thirst in your soul or not. If there is no thirst in your soul, they say, clear off first. Let's take care of those with a thirst in their soul. Is somebody truly thirsty for an encounter today with a new order of grace? Is anyone truly thirsty for an encounter today with a change of level supernaturally? That's going to be your portion. In the name of Jesus. For God said he will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. He said he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, upon all our children, and they shall spring forth as windows. They will spring forth. A change of story will come. Now, I will pour water, Isaiah 44 verse 3, upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground i will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring only the thirsty are entitled to outpouring when there is no genuine thirst there is no access a genuine thirst is a covenant qualifier for an encounter with the power of God. There must be a thirst. And he said that thirst will bring about the outpouring of the Spirit and the blessings that normally accompany it. Every genuine outpouring of the Spirit is accompanied with undeniable blessings blessings and my blessings upon thy offspring and they shall spring forth and then they shall be saying one will say I am the Lord the other one will say name by the name of the Lord God will become so majestic in the lives of his people that others will be identifying with God through them very cheaply Ten men will be joined their hands to the skirt of it as a Jew and say, We will go with you, for we can see God in your life. Well, today somebody is having an encounter with that kind of turnaround right here. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. Every outpouring of the Spirit is always accompanied with the blessing of God. Every encounter with the power of God will always be accompanied with the blessing of God. That's why every revival releases strange blessings on the people that are on key with it. Remember uh, Isaiah 61 on verse 1 the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He's anointed me to preach the gospel and then um, went on and on and on and on given us the beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise, the spirit of heaviness, to comfort all that mourn. Huh? Then they shall build their old ways. Come and say blessings. Huh? The encounter of today will culminate in a new order of blessings in your life. Somebody believes that, let me hear your loudest. Amen. He said, when the poor and the needy seek water and there is none, Isaiah 41 verse 17, and their soul faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Jacob, will not forsake them. 
I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of waters and the dry land springs of water. When the poor and the needy seek water and there is none, I, the Lord, will hear them. I will open rivers in high places. That means I will pour out my spirit. You know, out of his belly shall spring forth rivers of living water. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit. John 7, 37 to 39. Today, God will respond to your thirst with a strange encounter in this prophetic service. Somebody believes that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. July 25, 1986, I sat in a meeting like this and I was desperate and I was away from the flesh. I can't tell who sat by my right or by my left or in my front and I was up in the gallery and I said, Lord, Whatever makes again, again. I want it here. I want it on my life. There was a whole reason I traveled. And I knew what it means to be away from the flesh. I didn't know the name of the hotel. I can't remember. And I remember all kinds of things in my life. We were passing somewhere around the village and I said, look at that stream. That's where we were bathed in 1976 when we came here for outreach. I still remember, I, if you take me there, I would put, I tell you the rock where I stood on. But here was I, I couldn't even remember the, I didn't ask where is the name of the hotel. I didn't, I didn't enter any shop in my life. I came to collect what Egan carried. That's all I came for. And I know it's for free, but it would take me seeing it when it flashes. <laughs> so I, I sat for it. And while he was ministering, believe me, I never heard what he said. But I saw with my naked eyes his face transfigured. And I saw that face became of, like that of a little baby. And I saw oil, as it were, flowing down his head and coming down his cheeks and down to his garment. And immediately I had a spiritual electric shock. One strong current of the spirit hit me where I sat down and I broke down, weeping uncontrollably. And I loved to package myself well. But I lost control. The Holy Ghost just burst forth. And in the midst of the sobbing, the Lord said to me, My son David, the baton has been passed over to you. <laughs> so I partook of a grace that I could never or may never have succeeded to labor for just by positioning myself to connect with it. Somebody's here. You know there's a strange grace on this commission. How many agree with that? Strange, strange grace. Inexplainable but undeniable. Strange grace. Strange grace. That will make somebody go to the smallest of the churches and come and tell us that it's exactly like a tabernacle. Strange grace. And because you are also the temple of the Lord. So if it's there in the physical temple, it must be there in the spiritual temple. So you need that encounter today that will empower you to sweatlessly duplicate the manifestations of his glory in your family life, in your business life, in your career, in your pursuits. That everything will reflect your identity as a winner. That's so important. So I took the baton of the word of faith ministry from that picture called Kenneth E. Hagen. He taught it so much and it's given us, God has given us grace to prove what he taught and empower us to teach it the more by the confidence of the proofs 
that he brings our way. That is God. So it's not enough to be present. You must be properly positioned to qualify for an encounter. It's not enough to be present. One of my precious ones, um, who was a staff here, when I was sharing, he said, sir, you know, I was also in that conference. Maybe she went as a tourist to see how Tulsa looks like and how American life is like and had fun, plenty of it perhaps, and went to every shop buying all kinds of stuff. But I went on a mission. I believe somebody here came here on a mission this morning. I went on a mission. Say, God, I want to encounter the grace at work in this man because I believe it is grace. And I went after it. This is so important. Your life will never lose color forever. <laughs> Somebody exactly saying, now I'm married at 46. Amen. Every tight down destiny is released today. And just before we open up for the hour, two testimonies came out of Wolfby. Only three weeks. Death with 20 years problem. Because darkness has no power against light. Wolfby is a mountain of light and lightning. Light and lightning. Somebody has came out with I near 10 years. Jesus dealt with it. October is the last Wolf B session for the year and it's starting on the 10th of October. Somebody here must position himself or herself to be part of that. Because God finished you in six days. He won't need six days to repair and restore you. And so if you have any opportunity to encounter light, go for it. And watch what transformation that will be. God doesn't change his mind. Breakthrough unlimited is his agenda for your life. And so if it's being limited, then go and destroy the limitations by going after revelation. And then you find yourself flowing into your own blessing of breakthrough unlimited. It's starting the Monday after tomorrow, and so you have the opportunities, and we have it in about 22 centers, and so you can key into anyone that's nearest to you. We have same quality of stuff going on in every place. Amen. Glory to God. Now, for the time we have this morning, we want to open up the agenda for the month the righteous shall flourish hmm. like a palm tree it shall grow up like the cedar in lebanon it shall still bring forth fruits in old age it shall be fat and flourishing to show that the lord is upright and is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him Nothing causes destiny to blossom like manifest righteousness. Say with me, manifest righteousness. He says, Be ye not deceived. He that doeth righteousness is righteous. First John 3 7. Righteousness. By the death of Jesus, we all have access to imputed righteousness but manifest righteousness is our gateway to a flourishing life and destiny be not deceived he that doeth righteousness is righteous 
even as he himself is righteous. Sanctification is the foundation for our glorious destiny in Christ. Because sinfulness eroded his glory on man. Only righteousness can restore it back. Somebody here is breaking loose from every imprisonment of evil today. So we began our series on unveiling the wonders of sanctification. Unveiling the wonders of sanctification. At resurrection, Jesus conquered the man of sin, his name Satan. And since that time, sin lost its dominion over the believer. Romans 6 14. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. For sin shall not have dominion over you. When Jesus said it's finished, sin lost its dominion over man. That's why anybody can walk straight and say, Jesus, I receive you into my life. No force in hell can hold him back. And they all watch him just march away, march out of hell into heaven. Whatever may have been put together against your testimony as a Christian, you're walking away from them today. Yeah. Most of the time we quote Third John verse 2, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in hell. But we don't complete it. He said, even as thy soul prospereth. So the prosperity of your soul and my soul is what determines our overall prosperity in life. <laughs> so, Therefore, sanctification is what defines the limits of our possessions. <laughs> you remember he said in Obadiah verse 17, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. And what happens? Holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Now, there is deliverance, there is holiness, then there is Open gate to your possessions. So our sanctification level is what defines the limit of our access to our inheritance. It's so important. Remember also in Acts chapter 20 verse 32, I commend you to go down to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give your own inheritance among them which are sanctified. So our access to our inheritance demands sanctification. That means your portion and my portion is determined by our sanctification. This is so important. Unveiling the wonders of sanctification. In 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8, he said, But exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profited little. But what? Godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is and the one which is to come. Hmm. Profitable in all realms, physically, socially, in your professions, in your career. Profitable unto all things, having the promise of the life which now is, and the one which is to come. The wonders of the Christian adventure has its foundation in righteousness. 
righteousness. Who is like unto thee, O God, who is like thee? Is glorious in holiness. Glorious. The glory of redemption is unveiled in holiness. It's vital for us to recognize that the beauty of Christianity, the glory of redemption, they are all rooted in sanctification. Until you have done the will of God, we are not entitled to his promise. Wonders of sanctification. Until we have done the will of God, we are not entitled to his promise. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 3, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that he should abstain from fornication. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. And I said, you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you may obtain the promise. So sanctification is the will of God that guarantees us access to obtaining the promise. Can I hear your amen? amen. And I pray that today the power of God that's going on right now from this altar, from the spoken word, we destroy every entrapment of filthiness in the name of Jesus. For this is the will of God, even our sanctification. Unveiling the wonders of sanctification. Through Christ, we have become the righteousness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 So we have in Imputed righteousness by redemption. But we have to commit ourselves to manifesting that righteousness. So he said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12 So righteousness is imputed. Sanctification has to be worked out. Has to be what? Has to be worked out. That's why every day you sanctify your body by having your showers. You sanctify your mouth by having your toothbrush or twin stick. No matter how much you did it yesterday, if you don't do it today, you start smelling. If you stay one week without doing it, CC, you will carry you out of church. <laughs> because you will spoil the environment. So sanctification is about taking daily care of your spiritual life. Daily what? Daily care of your spiritual life. Most of us have had our last spiritual shower about three months ago. So we are already smelling. Jesus taught them to pray. He said, when you pray, say. Mm -hmm. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. You should be praying it daily. Taking spiritual care of your life. And I pray that from today, no more carelessness. <laughs> Just tell yourself, how glorious will I be if I don't have my toothbrush? And one week is gone, and now two weeks, and now three weeks. You become a factory of bacteria. When you open your mouth, billions of bacteria will be going out. This is so important. Please recognize that iniquity is a mystery. The Bible said the mystery of iniquity doth already work. 
And whosoever now let it shall be let until it be taken out of the way. 2 Thessalonians 2.7 The mystery of iniquity doth already walk. Only he who now let it <laughs> or gives room to that mystery will let until it be taken out of the way. So iniquity is not a psychological phenomenon. It's a mystery. I mean, and I think we need to know that. We Think of it. The Bible said, Satan stood against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. First Chronicles 21.1. They said, David, it is said that they should not count his people. He said, leave me alone. Job said, but you said, he said, get off. The Bible says, Satan stood up. Iniquity is a mystery. It's not a story. There are forces of hell behind the filthiness of the saints. How is iniquity a mystery? Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1 to 5. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the Lord, before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Come on now. And the Lord said unto me, The Lord rebuked thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuked thee. Is this not a brand plucked out of, a, out of the fire? Abba. There's a man carrying fire on his head. Satan, what's happening? And now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel helpless. Iniquity is a mystery. I therefore come against all the forces of hell walking iniquity in anyone's life. Lose your grip in the name of Jesus. And then a greater mystery stood to his rescue. Take off that filthy garment from him and clothe him with a change of raiment. Behold, I've caused thy iniquity to pass from thee. That is somebody's verdict today. That devilish taste dies now. So we saw David, a man after God's own heart. Satan stood against him and provoked him to go contrary to the word of God. And you know the plague that came after. We saw Joshua, the high priest, a firebrand. Come and say firebrand. Is this not a brand plucked out of fire? What? So every firebrand here that is losing the fire of consecration be restored in the name of Jesus. How is iniquity a mystery? Luke 22 and verse 3. The Bible says Satan, he said, then entered Satan into Judas. I mean, he had no business selling Jesus. He was stealing regularly and there was no arrest. He was the one carrying the money. He was the accountant and the treasurer. He was the auditor. And money was always flowing. So why must you sell him instead of maintaining a regular income? Satan entered into Judas. Whatever may have entered into anyone here that's moving you off your spiritual frequency, I cast them out in the name of Jesus. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Then entered Satan into Judas. Being one of the twelve. 
He stole his throne from him because God has given them 12 thrones where they would judge the tribes of Israel. He was there when they gave them the 12 thrones, but he robbed them of it. Whatever is out to rob you of your throne, I curse it today in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Potiphar's wife will have robbed Joseph of his throne. How many agree with that? He said, no. How can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? The fear of God secured the enthronement of Joseph. There are many who have risen to be president of a nation, but they died as peasants without identity. Robbed of the devil. Whatever has been calculated to rob you of your glorious destiny, I curse it today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. That's what makes iniquity a mystery. Then we have the great mystery. First Timothy 3.16. He said, great is the mystery of godliness. What is it? He said, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Now, Jesus was declared to be the Son of God with power. By the spirit of holiness. Romans 1 4. <laughs> so he wasn't struggling. There was an empowerment for holiness. The mystery of iniquity empowers the believer for fieldiness. But the mystery of godliness empowers the believer for holiness. John 8 46, which of you convinces me of sin? Jesus was declared to be the Son of God by the Spirit of holiness. I decree the release of that Spirit upon all of us afresh in the name of Jesus. There was that spirit walking in Daniel. Walking in Shadrach, Meshach. They would rather die than be defied. Amen. Is there a man in whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost? And they couldn't find anything against him, prime minister. Except against the law of his God. It takes the empowerment of the spirit of holiness to be holy. It's impossible in the energy of the flesh because the battle against us are essentially spiritual. David didn't plan to number Israel. Satan said, number them. What for? Number them now. Abba. Joshua was a firebrand. Then he was clothed with a filthy garment. Satan said, force it on him. God said, get up! In Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 and 2, we saw the seven spirits of God. And the last listed there was the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Jesus carried that spirit of the fear of the Lord. He is the carrier of the seven spirits of God. We are all aware of that. And the Bible says, he who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, became sin for us. That we might be made righteous of God in him. So when you carry that spirit of the fear of God, you know, you naturally break loose from the hordes of iniquity. Amen. Amen. We saw the two misses on display. Aaron put down his rod and it became a serpent. And then the magicians put down their own and it became a serpent. And the greater rod swallowed up the smaller ones. That's how the great mystery of godliness we swallow up without any feeling the lesser mystery of iniquity. <laughs> if Jesus needed the spirit of holiness, who was born of the Holy Ghost, 
we are all born of our parent ghost. If Jesus needed the spirit of holiness to live holy, then we will be crazy thinking that we can try it. Somebody's receiving that spirit right here. A fresh outpouring of the spirit of holiness. Just in one moment, put a little paper in your hand. Is there an issue in your life that looks like Satan is standing there? We are just coming out of one hot month of prayer. Yet your prayer life won't just move. There is one monkey demon that's sitting down by you and enough, enough. Father, thank you. Are there habits that are taunting you? You yourself hate it, but you have been helpless in dealing with it. As the Lord living, whatever you desire to drop today, they must drop off your life. Your spiritual laxity that's giving room to the devil to manipulate your life. The prayerlessness, the wordlessness, the loose tongue, the evil association that is bringing you down daily. The sinful habits that's taunting your Christian destiny. It's a prophetic service, so you obey prophetic instructions to become a partaker of the blessings of this prophetic service. I can see many Josephs that are about to lose their throne. On the bed of adultery. I can see many Daniels in place of authority that are already eating the forbidden fruit. And are just about to take the one that will be poisonous. And God is setting him free. We've been praying for a new Nigeria. And we keep on defiling. We are praying and still defining what we are praying to happen. Somebody may leave, have to leave that job or God may leave you. The choice is simply yours. But when you live for God, God will position you somewhere else. You can't be part of it to change it. I stand for the truth. You don't want the truth. Carry your thing. Go, my friend. I need heaven. Glory to God. Even the king could not lobby Daniel to defile his spiritual life. He said, King, relax. Don't touch that area. Sensitive, too sensitive. Don't touch that area. I never pray to another God. Never. Till I die, there is no way a Muslim will pray and I will say amen because I know he's not praying to any God. There, there is no way. But on what? For what? Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. Him only. Don't worship no nonsense. Somebody needs to be free. And that somebody is here right now. Yeah. Satan must leave you alone. Yeah. It is your hour of restoration. Yeah. Let's rush to conclude. What does it take to walk in sanctification? One. A genuine hunger, thirst, and love for righteousness. Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. They shall be filled with the righteousness of God. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. They shall be filled. Talking about Jesus, he said, he loveth righteousness. 
and hated wickedness. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him an, uh, anointed him with the oil of gladness above his fellows. Huh. Isaiah, I mean, uh, Psalm 45 and verse 6 to 8. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The sceptre of thy kingdom is a right sceptre. Thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, thy God, has also highly uh, has anointed him with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Above thy fellows. The love for righteousness, the hunger and the thirst for righteousness is a vital key to working in sanctification. What else must I do to work in sanctification? As mentioned earlier, a crave for the outpouring of the spirit of holiness. A crave for the outpouring of the spirit of holiness. When that fire comes, the Bible said he will thoroughly purge his floor. Hmm? He will gather the chaff and burn them with unquenchable fire. The Holy Ghost is the refiner's fire. Is what? The Holy Ghost is the refiner's fire. The blood of Jesus is the fuller soap. But it takes the refiner's fire for your real value and my real value to come forth. Malachi 3 verse 1 to 5. What does he do? The spirit of holiness. Ezekiel 36 verse 27. I will put my spirit within you and will cause you to walk in my ways. You shall keep my judgments and do them. So that force empowers you to walk in God's status, to keep his judgments and do them. So there must be a crave. Oh God, empower me from within to walk in your ways, to keep your judgments and to do them. Thank you, Father. How many love righteousness here? Whatever you love, you attract. Therefore, I decree the release of the spirit of holiness on everyone under the sound of my voice today. Yeah. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Yeah. The blessedness of sanctification include access to your inheritance. Come and say, access to my inheritance. Access to your inheritance. Acts chapter 20 verse 32. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12. By him we have access to the inheritance of saints in the light. Access to your inheritance. I commend you to God and to the word of grace. He's able to build you up and give you inheritance among them which are sanctified. You have access to your inheritance. Job was a man that feared God and eschewed evil. A perfect man. He became the greatest of all men in the east. How? God revealed his secrets to him. The fear of the Lord qualifies you access to the secrets of God. And secret, the secrets of God is your access to your inheritance. Amen. Job chapter 1 and verse 1 to 3 and Job 29 verse 3. Remember the Bible says the fear of the Lord. He said the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his salvation. Psalm 25 verse 14. Another blessedness of sanctification is guaranteed posterity. It doesn't stop with you. It continues to your children's children. Guaranteed posterity. Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord, that really delights himself in his commandment. The Bible said, His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. He said, wealth and riches shall be in his house, 
and his righteousness endure for how long? And verse 6 of it said, The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Say with me, posterity. Sanctification guarantees our glorious posterity. It, did, it doesn't stop with you. It goes on to your children and to your children's children, to your children's children after you. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 7. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. The wicked man walks in his crookedness and his children are caused after him. So your integrity today is an investment into the destinies of your children tomorrow. That's why most of the children of corrupt people don't have identity. Most of them die before they are really dead. The man, the man themselves. They mention and say, oh, okay, where is he? Is he still around? They ask that, is he still around? He was in front before, but they don't know whether he's still around now or not. Is he still around? But the just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. Don't destroy the destinies of innocent people by crookedness and perverseness. These are children brought your way by God. You will give account someday of the damages you have done. Stop it there before it stops you. Except by the act of redemption. You don't hear the name of any native doctor. You don't. Because they are always hired to do wickedness to people. They hire them, help me kill that man. And God says, okay, I've also killed your children. And so they go to school, they couldn't understand nothing. They come out of school, they can't get a job anywhere. When they appear, they say, no, 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 no. Sorry, it's a mistake, we invited you for interview. But the just man walk at his integrity and his children are blessed after him. Your children will be more blessed than you are. It's never late to be right. So let's make it right today. Let's turn our back on the devil. Let's cast our vote for Jesus. Let's cast our vote for righteousness. And then watch what happens. The blessedness of sanctification is a secured posterity. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Secured posterity. Unhindered access to your inheritance. I believe today is a great day. Somebody's life is touched already. If anyone is here this morning and is not born again, that is the number one step into imputed righteousness. And that is required for you to enjoy manifest righteousness. So if you are here this morning, you are not born again yet. We are not just talking about the blessedness of the now, but much more importantly, the blessedness of eternity that money cannot buy, which cannot buy. Human connection cannot buy. Only redemption. And your walking in righteousness secures it. Wherever you are this morning, you want to be saved, please stand to your feet. I'd like to pray with you. Everyone that wants to give his or life to Jesus, please stand to your feet. I'd like to pray with you. Shall we rise in one minute? When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the feet of the Lord shall set up his standard against him. Amen. I'd like you to cry out on any of such issues. Get deep behind me, Satan, in the name of Jesus and by the spirit of holiness. Get deep behind me, Satan. Hear this. Can I take you told the story of a church he went into? He said, the church was like a freezer. The church was like what? You get on the pulpit and nothing moves. What? So the following day he came to that church during the day and began to pray. And the Lord showed him 
a creature like a monkey hidden behind the ceiling around the altar. And he began to say, in the name of Jesus, I command you, get up from here. Get up from here. So jump down from that ceiling and then mm, he said, get out from here. And then he says, get up from here. In the name of Jesus, get up from here. And he saw him out to the door. The following night, fire. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Whatever monkey is sitting on your spiritual life, that makes you pray with difficulty. That makes you fast with difficulty. <laughs> Every monkey sitting on your shoulders for physical filthiness and spiritual filthiness begin to cast them out right now. In the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb. Get out! Get deep behind me, Satan! In the name! of Jesus get thee behind me Satan in the name of Jesus the mystery of the filthiness of the flesh and the filthiness of the spirit get thee behind me Satan in the name of Jesus and by the spirit of holiness get thee behind me right now get thee behind me right now get thee behind me right now get thee behind me in the name of Jesus by the blood of Jesus get thee behind me All the demons, all the demons of spiritual laxity, get deep behind me in the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb. Thank you, Father. Come on, begin to declare, I am free. Somebody's taking his freedom by force. I am free. I am free. I am free. I am free. Call that vow, that vow force by name. I am free from you today. You spirit of hell. I am free from you today. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Whatever you are free from this month, you are free from them forever. Yeah. Whatever you are free from this month, you are free from them forever. Yeah. Now, this is the peak of the event today. It's a platform for duplication and multiplication of grace. Very simple thing. As this come your way, because the priestly anointing flows to whatever the priest touches. Aaron was a priest of the Most High God. And the psalmist said by revelation, the oil upon the head of Aaron came down through his bears and to his cat and to his food. The dead have been raised before, so this can quicken anybody back to life. So whatever is dead in your body, whatever is dead in your life, in the name of Jesus, as this man to touches you, I decree release of same grace. Paul said, you are all partakers of my grace. You are all partakers of my grace. I decree that the grace, the apostolic grace on this commission contained in this mantle, as it reaches you, partake of your portion. 
in the same vein, on the spot. He said, God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul so that Antichrist and Nepros were taken from his hand to them that were sick and diseases were healed and the evil spirits were cast out. God wrought special miracles. Whatever requires a special miracle, as this man to reaches you, is delivered into your hand. Every evil spirit tormenting any destiny is cast out on the spot. Every strange movement in anyone's body comes to an end on the spot. The blind receive your sight. The deaf receive your hearing. The dumb begin to speak again. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's all by faith. By faith, that woman touched the hem of his garment and was made instantly whole. Somebody's catching the liberation anointing today. In Jesus' name. Please get seated. As he touches, this is what to do. Please listen, don't do nothing. Listen right now. On your head and on your garment. And you pass it. You are not praying, no prayer. I've already prayed right now. Begin to prophesy. After that, you have only one second in your hand. Touches you and then it goes. That garment on your body becomes a mantle. Wherever you appear, this commission appears. Wherever you appear, your prophet appears. Wherever you appear, the apostolic unction on this commission appears. That age-long trouble is over finally today. Come on right now. Begin to prophesy over your life as you receive that. As soon as you got it, begin to pray in the spirit. Don't watch it. No watching anybody. Just keep praying. Ushers, nobody enters now. Please, nobody enters now. prophesying after getting it this is your hour of change don't watch nowhere don't look nowhere or just nobody comes into the sanctuary right now everyone for the second service wait outside until when we are done no inflow of people into this sanctuary we are in god's awesome presence everybody's tapping to his portion right now nobody's waiting nobody's wasting everybody's on key you're taking your portion Right now is the dawning of a new day. Hallelujah. Creative miracles are taking place right now. You are being free from every evil spirit tormenting your destiny in any form. Everything holding you down. Whatever answer to this commission answers to you right now. Somebody's breaking forth into his own realm right now. Somebody's breaking forth into his own portion right now. Come on, begin to prophesy over your life. I have stepped into a new realm. I've stepped into a new realm. I'm stepping into a new prophetic realm. Whatever answers to my prophet, answers to me. Whatever answers to my prophet, answers to me. Whatever answers to this commission, answers to me. This is my day of deliverance. 
this is my day of liberty this is my day of a new beginning it is a new beginning for me Radaba, Jekoria, Baradaso, Bakarada, Ekiagala, Deshekeriabo, Bereketizeno, Baradasato, Jekeriale, Barade, Barade, Osa Saratise, Washigale, Predis Konote, Resisto Rodo Proctenebro Diaeta. Position yourself spiritually. After you have received it, you want to stand up, stand to your feet. Begin to appropriate what has taken place in your life. Somebody is breaking forth. Somebody is breaking forth. You are that somebody. Somebody is breaking loose. You are that somebody. Somebody is breaking through. You are that somebody. Somebody is duplicating the grace. You are that somebody. Somebody is multiplying the grace. You are that somebody. Don't watch this moment pass you by. This is your moment of new beginning. Don't watch this moment pass you by. Seize the moment. Seize the moment. Seize the moment. Take your miracle children. Take it now. Take your breakthrough. Take it now. Whatever is packed on this commission is yours for the taking. Take your deliverance. Oh, Rebecca de Susanova. Jatarado, perdese le brokine tesia. Yeshe giraba yatalo tesi. Where it is the kero da baradasona. Yakaride yeketego la barados. Yeshi agaba. Yeshi agaba. Bareto sino. Perica neto. Bradasonea. Yekiri alona. Merito no borodo. Yeki barabayato. Bradise neketeno. Brede neto. Brede neto. Brede neto. Edi canato. Yashi angeroda. Beredi sonoto. Breki tanato. Ba 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 ba. Eko rabayete. Beko rabayato. Parada bayatuse. E bibi ba ba. E bibi ba ba. E bibi ba ba. E di adolate. Yekeri bayakotano. Bradalo. 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 Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. In the dawning of a new day. Take it now. Take it now. You must not let this moment pass you by. The power of God is all over the places. Appropriate your passion right now. Everyone who has been ministered to just get up on your feet wherever you are. If you have received your month, your own impartation by the man to get up on your feet. Magnify Jesus from the depth of your heart. That grace is still flowing. That grace is still flowing. Creative miracles taking place already. That grace is still flowing. Creative miracles taking place already. That grace is still flowing. Thank you, Jesus. Precious name. Elisha craved for double the spirit upon Elijah and he got it. And the Bible reported that and when he too are smitten the water, they parted hither and thither. Whatever gives way to this commission begins to give way to you from today. There are countless thousands around the world that are on this service with us today. Where are the net? Just put that mantle in your hand to the screen of your laptop, wherever you are in the world. And I decree that the same transference of spirit that we are experiencing right now flows through the airwaves to reach you there where you are. Yeah. 
from now, the same order of grace begins to manifest in your life. And God wrought special miracles. Return home with your special miracles. And return back here on Sunday with your special testimony. Some will hit you between now and Wednesday. You'll be there on Wednesday to share it. This week shall be a week of strange manifestations of the liberation unction in your life. It shall be the beginning of such manifestation. It will never end anymore in your life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lift up your hands to heaven. The clothes on your body are now mantles. Any unwanted event around your life, just cast down the mantle. It must give way. In the name of Jesus. Get home today, remove that clothes and wave it in your house. Wave it around in your house and say, no go area for the devil. No go area for evil forces. No go area for evil spirits. Sanctified area for Jesus. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. has just placed in your hands the key to all-round victory, exploits, success, and unquestionable dominion over all life's challenges. The end has come to all your struggles in Jesus' name. Please share your testimony with us. Write Bishop David Oyedepo, 21688 Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria. Call 774-7546, 774-7547, And best of all, come hear the man of God live as you worship with us at Faith Tabernacle, Canaan Land, Kilometer 10, Idiroko Road, Otah.